today as the Lord would allow us. I hope you're happy. I hope you're making it. Listen, man, what is this, like 38 days? I know. Yeah, and if you're feeling frustrated and want to get out there with the protesters and be like, I'm tired too. Open up all of America. I would say don't <laughs> so you can be safe, but I don't blame you. So maybe you need to pick it around your house. Maybe you need to pick it up and down your block. I don't know. I don't blame you. I'm done. I want this to be over. I want to see the saints. Ugh. I want to hug their necks. I want to travel. I want to go to Africa again. I was scheduled to go there in June this year again. I want to go to China again. Speaking of which, the shirt is compliments of China. So the deal about China is China is not um, considered a communist country anymore, but they still are working their way out of that. So you're still not allowed to wear Christian paraphernalia, anything, nothing that says Jesus, no reflection of that. But it's interesting because throughout China, there's like all of these great um, clothing with different quotes on them. So like this one says, I can't wait, let me remember what it says. Yeah, I will not hold myself, um, I will not hold myself to a standard of grace, um, but uh, no, I will not hold myself to a standard of perfection, but grace. You get it? So I'm not going to say that I'm perfecting myself, but I'll let grace work me out. So um, they have all kind of cool stuff like this in China. I miss China. I, I, I could go back there. I miss the Netherlands and my dear daughter Anne and her family. I miss Chicago, OMG, uh, New Life, all the things. I miss New York, perfecting Dr. Wilson, all of my brothers and sisters in New York. I miss everybody. I miss, I miss everybody. I miss the earth. How about that? Yeah, and so hopefully you do too. And if you're feeling all of this, it's all normal. It's all normal if you're ready to cry, be frustrated. It's all normal. It should be. Who in the heck has ever experienced this in our lifetime? None of us, ever, ever. So any type of anxiety, any type of frustration, irritation, it's normal. And you got to deal with that and know that it's normal to feel that way. But we know God is still in control. That's what's up. That's what makes us be able to handle this. So um, I want to share just a little bit today as I'm able to, and, and hopefully I won't be before you very long like I'm at church. And like, where you got to go? I mean, where you go? Where you going, honey? Anywho, uh, so, um, but in the midst of this, and, and here's the deal, I say all the time, I, I preach from where I am, and if I feel it, I just assume others possibly have felt it, already feeling it, or about to. And so I always preach from a place of where I am or what God has already done for me because that's what makes it real. Um, so I want to talk today a little bit about the Lord. Yep, and you all have heard the ministry before, but if ever some scripture, I think, Personally, part of what I am appreciating about the journey is that scripture have to really come to life now. And I think in the church world, we do a lot of quoting of scriptures, you know, we memorize a lot of scriptures, but then to have to get the application of it, it's a profound thing that I got to really stand on what he's saying. And so... Um, I hope to minister a little bit today about the oil. Um, saints, yeah, get your friends or whatever. Tell them, you know, we're going to do this. Start connecting other people. I pray that, that tomorrow dinner ministries or tip ministries can be a source of just sound teaching, biblical teaching that a sinner off the street can hear it and it makes sense to them and that they're able to apply it. That a backslider that might be struggling in some things can get into that word and not feel any type of condemnation or judgment, but just that God's word is true. I do pray that for everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit um, about the oil. Um, um, uh, reminder coming up that we know that May, Mother's Day is coming up, so we're going to do some stuff within our house. Like you got to break up this monotony. Y'all going to be tired of seeing me every week, so we're going to start doing some family stuff. It's like, since we're still doing this, let's just keep on doing it. Um, so I want you to start sitting in questions that you would want to ask your mother or a mother. You know, let's let's just talk about this for a second because this is something that we don't deal with. 
This truth is, uh, COVID, you will either have a, a cuddling COVID with your husband or your spouse, your family member, or it's going to be a kindling fire COVID because y'all about to tear this house up because just so much conflict. Um, so we want to talk about that. And we want to deal with that because until this lifts and we're all home together, I, I'm just a firm believer that you duke it out until you find a resolution. Family is the order of God. It is. And I know there's so many, so many components that it takes to make a family successful. It takes a husband, a wife, children, grandparents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all these siblings. It takes all these things to make a family component successful. And it does take everybody doing their part, doing their part to make it a success. So I think in this time of COVID, either it's getting cuddly, oh my God, you know, you know, you know, or it's about to be major conflicts, like people stand in different rooms and I don't want to see you, don't you see me? And I get it, we're going to deal with that. And we pray that we can bring it into some sort of um, unity and peace and something, especially if there's a believer in the house. You, you are the peacemaker, right? Uh-huh. So let's talk a little bit about the oil as I love this passage of scripture. But just a little bit, we know that scripture declares that the scripture is used often in, in, in talking about oil from the Old Testament to the New and, and the oil represents the presence of God or the anointing of God or the spirit of God being poured out. In the Old Testament, the oil was done by the elders and by the priests after it had been prayed over around the altar. And it would be poured, um, for example, Aaron, that it ran down from his beard as he was being consecrated. The oil represented the presence of God, the anointing of God being upon us. And if ever there's a time, church, that we need to have the oil, it's now. If you are unfamiliar with the Holy Spirit as it transferred over into the New Testament, the oil then became the Holy Spirit, something that dwells within us. Um, the Bible said that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Um, it's an indwelling spirit. It's something that is deep, that God then fills us with his oil. We that are believers and that have been filled with the Holy Spirit. I cannot put enough emphasis on being filled with the Holy Spirit. I know, you know, it's funny because at the same time, while we have so much time to ourselves and so much downtime, the other part is um, you could get almost too carnal and too lackadaisical, and that oil will start seeping, meaning the presence of the Lord is not as nigh you. You want to protect the oil. You want to protect that you're not doing too much, that when it's time to get in the presence of God, that it's a challenge. That means your oil could be depleting just a little bit. Examples of the oil in the word of God in um, Psalms 23 and 5, we know the Lord's, the Lord's prayer. We know how to say the Lord's prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But let's go all the way fast forward. 23 and 5. The psalmist said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. So there is an oil, a presence of God. The church, let me just keep it real. I know um, I, it's like I almost feel like I, I keep saying I'm not 100. I promise I'm not. But, but it's a deep concern to me how, how far we're getting from what's representing the oil in the house of God. And there's a lot of things that are happening in the church that is not representative of the presence and the oil of God. Let me help you understand something. When the presence of God enters the room, it is unlike any experience you could have imagined or have ever had in your life. It cannot be em emulated. It cannot be, I'm, I'm sorry, it can't be, it can't be duplicated. You can't copy it. You can't fake it. When the presence of God enters into a room, the presence of God will break you. It is an oil that you, that you there's, there's a weeping that you could do on your own, but then there's an, a weeping and an overwhelming presence of the anointing of God, that's his oil. Um, his oil represented the day of Pentecost. That was the first profound shaking. The Bible said that the place shook where they were because the oil, the presence of God 
had entered into the room. When Moses first got introduced to God and when God allowed this burning bush to burn and, and it never stopped burning, it was a representation of the presence of God. So the psalmist said, Lord, thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. When David was first chosen to be king, there was Saul, excuse me, there was um, Samuel looking to see who's supposed to be the next king. He sends him down to the house of Jesse. Jesse brings all of his honorable sons before him and says, look, here's, here's all my sons. Which one of these buff, nice looking, hard working young men are going to be the next king? And, and Samuel went son to son and said, the oil is not being released. Hallelujah. I'm not feeling the unction to release the oil. And then here comes David. He said, well, I got one more kid. He's this little ruddy kid. He's out there with the sheep. He takes care of the sheep. They go and get David. And immediately the presence of God comes on Samuel. And he knows this is where you release the oil. Hallelujah. I need you to be encouraged today to know that when you have experienced the presence of God and you understand what that is for the oil, the dove, the anointing, the presence of God to come upon you, it is not by accident. You have been handpicked, chosen by God that the mantle of the oil would be released on you. I think part of my personal walk, as I say all the time, I don't really wear the pastor of the title pastor in a way of, 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 of how do I want to say it, in a way of notoriety or in a way of acceptance or affirmation. I really wear it in the seat of responsibility and accountability that I recognize that since the Father have released this oil upon me to be able to lead this precious people who are the apple of his eye, I treasure it. I treasure the oil and I'm careful what I do, where I go, what I say because it's, it's critical to me to, to preserve my oil because everybody don't have it. Everybody don't know what that is to be in the presence of God. Everybody don't know what that is to have the anointing upon your life, this dove that stays on you morning, noon, and night, that you, night, that you can only go so far and it follows you. You can't duck it. You can't, you can't ignore it. You can't sleep past it. It's called the oil. You have to know when the oil is poured out upon your life. Another passage of scripture that talks about the oil is when the woman of God in Matthew 26 and 7, the scripture says, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and she poured it on his head, speaking of Jesus, as he sat at me. So here was this woman that had heard about Jesus, this woman who didn't have a very good reputation, but she was a woman of wealth, that because the alabaster box was a very, very expensive box, but it was so expensive, and she wanted to bring Jesus her best. So this was a woman that had not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit, but she recognized the presence of God that was in Jesus. And she takes her oil and she pours it at his feet. This is, again, a representation of how precious oil is. And to lay this oil at the feet of Jesus is saying, I need to lay my best at the feet of Jesus. Church, there's a passage of scripture that says the deep calleth unto the deep. And I do believe that the more that God draws you, the more that God begins to deal with you, I do believe that there's this depth that he's going to get to, that he allows it to be very void. He allows it to be very blank, that nothing really feels it. I need to talk to you that even if you're not a believer, if you've never experienced the power of God, it could be that you're chasing something, you're looking for something that only Jesus can feel. And so it might be the next dude, the next girl, I don't know. It might be the next drug, I don't know. It might be the next something that you're searching for something that truth is, it's a depth of you that Jesus has placed in your heart that's going to reach for the depths of him. Hallelujah. And that's what makes us whole. So this woman saw something in Jesus, heard about this man named Jesus that she brought her very best and she placed it at his feet of this oil that she then began to rub with her hair and her feet and Jesus' feet. That's what it's about. It's giving up the best of you so that you can receive the best of him. You do not lose when you give your heart to Christ. Let me 
you stay there for a half a second or longer. You do, there's no such thing as I've given God so much and he's not giving me anything back. There's no such thing as I just feel like I've given God my life and there's no reward. There's no such thing because what you gotta calculate is what would have happened if you hadn't given your heart to Christ. You have no idea what state of mind you would be in. You have no idea what state of anything you would be in if you had not given yourself to Christ. So this oil is something that is precious and it is something to be guarded and it is something that you have to know when the oil is on you. It happens in families. One person in the family will have this dove upon them as it did with David, that they feel the presence of God, that God is drawing them, God is calling them and they can't explain it. It's called the oil. The oil of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord. It's where a bunch of friends could be together. All of you could be hanging, kicking it together. That's your boy, this your girl. This is what we do. We kicking it, we hanging it together. But then all of a sudden, the oil falls on your life and not on theirs. And you feel something drawing you out of sin, out of an atmosphere. It's what happened to my daddy. My daddy, who was um, a sinner man, had not known the Lord, was over in the Korean War. He's doing his thing. He's got an opium field. He's handling drugs. He's doing things just as all of his boys were doing. He would get put in prison, but my dad was a medical technician. He would get thrown in prison, but but then, but then because they needed him because they were at war, they would ask him to come out and shorten his time. Well, finally, he got thrown in prison. They said, this is it. His nickname was Chick. This is it. They threw him in prison and said, this is it. You're going to do your time. My dad is in prison. But what people didn't know was God had a divine appointment for the oil to be released on his life. While my father was in a prison cell, God allowed two men on each side of him that were thrown in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were thrown in prison, but these two men talked across my daddy for however long they did. It was enough to begin to convict him. He began to question who, who God was, what God was, as these two men began to minister to my daddy. These two men were then released. My father was left in a jail cell by himself. He got on his knees and he said to the Lord, I don't know you like these men know you, but if you be the God that they're talking about, then I need you to come see about me. My father says that it was like a mean coat had dropped off of his back. What happened was the oil came into his heart, came into his life. My daddy went on to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died in the faith. You gotta know when the oil of the Lord is upon your life. You gotta know it unapologetically. You gotta know it with no excuse. You gotta know it and protect it because you have been handpicked by God. In the midst of all of this COVID and everything we're going through, people, let me remind you, there's oil upon your life. There's an anointing upon your life that when this is over, that oil ain't going nowhere. There's an accountability for you to be able to preserve your oil. Here we go. So in the word of God in Matthew 25 and 1, here's a familiar passage of scripture. You all have heard me minister it before, but I pray that I can bless you that haven't heard it, that it blesses you. Matthew 25 and 1 in the Word. He said, then shall the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus talking, and he's trying to give examples for people to understand what heaven is like. What is heaven on earth like? He said, well, let me give you this example. He said, the kingdom of heaven is kind of like ten virgins. Virgins meaning these women have never been touched. They're clean. They never, now, 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 now. I hate to go to commercial break, but you know, Y'all know what a virgin is, right? <laughs> I know, it's funny, in the 21st century. Like, in that day, that meant they had never even been kissed. Like, that's what Bridget, yeah. We'll move on. Anywho, so the scripture says uh, that it was like unto the kingdom of heaven. There were ten verses, okay? Ten verses which took their lamps. They all got lamps, okay? And they went forth to the bridegroom. So these are ten virgins ready to go see the bridegroom. And five of them, five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Okay, but they're all still clean. The term good girls. These were good girls. But five were foolish good girls. They're kind of goofy. And five, five were wise good girls. They used their mind. They that were foolish took their lamps but they took no oil. So they got their lamps and all of the, I'm gonna grab this up a minute. Get your mic, pass, it's in your arm, okay. 
okay, this is like that. Same thing. Okay, so let's act like this is full. Okay, so the foolish one said, oh, we're going to go see the bridegroom. We're going to go see the bridegroom. So they took their oil, and let's act like it's full, and this is all. They took their lamp with their oil. Okay. The Bible said, but the wise took their oil in their vessels with their lamp. So, but the wise took extra oil and their vessels. Here we go. Ready for the story? I love this story. So while the bridegroom tarried, they all went to sleep. Because everybody's waiting for the bridegroom. When is he coming? I don't know. When is COVID going to be over? <laughs> Girl, I heard Georgia. They opened up their state. What state are you? Are you in Georgia? Don't you go out. You don't have to go out. <laughs> Just because they said it's okay. You don't have to go out. Okay? Girls, I, nails, we ain't going to talk about it. I hear, we ain't going to talk about it. But you ain't got to go out. Okay? Anywho, uh, all right. So everybody went to sleep. Because nobody knew when COVID was going to be over. Nobody knew when the bridegroom was going to come. So everybody went to sleep. Here we go. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Midnight, here comes CNN. All is open. Fox News. The whole nation, the whole earth is open. Here we go. There was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those verses, 10 verses, 10 of the women, 10 verses. Then all of those verses arose. They got their lamps ready. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. So there's a small snag in this, in this story. Like, I don't know if that meant that when they went to sleep, they let the lamps keep burning. I don't know. That's not told. It's just said they went to sleep. So it's assumed everybody put their lights out. So they put their lamps out because they went to sleep. The foolish wakes up and says, wait, 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 wait. We don't have any more oil. So they go to the wise and said, girlfriend, girl, we ain't got no oil. We got to get dressed. Girls, you know it takes a long time to get dressed. They all try to get dressed. Girl, we got to get dressed. The bridegroom is coming. The fool's coming. We need a light. I can't see. And the fool, the wise, this is the foolish. They're working hard. They're trying to do the wise light. They get their lights on. They put on their stuff. They get ready to see the bridegroom. And the Bible says, but the wise answer, when the foolish asked them, the wise answer saying, no, we're not giving you any of our oil. Watch this. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But I'll tell you what you can do. Go down to Walmart. They said, go ye rather to them that sell and buy your own. Go to Walmart. Target is open. Go get your own oil. And get dressed because we don't have enough to give to you. I gotta finish the story. And while the foolish went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in and went in with them and the marriage, and they shut the door. Afterward, the foolish ones came back from the store because it was so packed, because everybody was excited that it was open, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. We're here. We're ready. We have our oil. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. So, we got to be careful during COVID that you don't put your oil down. We have to be careful to preserve our oil. The anointing that was with us pre-COVID, it ain't going nowhere. But you can't start going to sleep. You can't get in the trend of Jesus is coming or he's not coming or I have plenty of time or Jesus understand why I'm so carnal now or Jesus, you, we can't. You have to preserve your oil and above all, you have to know how much oil you have to just take care of you. That's where we are. So for years, I was taught this story, and I knew this story, and as a child growing up, I used to think to myself, why wouldn't they share their oil? And I always thought that was so mean. Like, it was selfish. Like, doesn't God want us to share until I went through my own life experience 
and I realized I had enough strength to get me through the test I was going through, and I didn't have enough strength to help everybody else. That's what I'm saying. I know it. This is a time that, you know, we're talking 37 days, 38 days. And saints, let me tell you what, I know we did by human nature. By human nature, we're standing strong, Jesus with you, no weapon for me, Jesus shall prosper, prayer groups popping up everywhere, and then no results like you thought. <laughs> I declare in Jesus' name, by April 10th, it's going to be over. I'm not throwing off. I'm just saying. We did all of that. Everybody doing it. You know, and I declare that not one person on my block will die, but then the first person on your block died. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That was a lot of oil being poured out. Oh, yeah. And, and a lot of tongues, a lot of stuff. But then it becomes 36 days. And the prayer groups are getting less. And then it will become 50 days. And, and maybe the death toll don't go down. So you gotta preserve your oil. And you've gotta know when you're doing and you're staying in a rhythm of your seat and a rhythm of your consecration and a rhythm of your obedience that if it's just enough for you to hold you and that you can still be poured into, that you can still wake up in the morning and get the presence of God, you, got, you gotta stay in that. And then you text people more than call. Because calling may drain you. It may go from emailing people more than texting. Because then I didn't see it right away. My point is you got to know what you can handle. How, how, how? Can I keep it real? Can I keep it real? When you hear the loss of people that this is what's tearing me up right now. is the loss of loved ones, family members who are losing loved ones and that I can't do their services. I can't I can't race to their side and be with them. That's that's tearing me up. But I, what can I do about it? So I got to send prayers. I got to send flowers. And what I can't do is let it grip me because I don't know when the next person may lose someone. And I got to have enough oil for the next person and the next person. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to do you. When people are calling you that this person died, that person died, maybe you need to stop listening. I got to do my part because I'm a leader and I'm anointed enough to handle it, but you may not. And so you may not need to watch CNN every day because it's draining your oil. You may need to watch your groups of people that are going through depression that you're trying to be a strength to them, that you're trying to encourage them. You might need to pull back and, 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 and refer them to a, a, a ministry that can pray for them until you can preserve your oil. Everything I feel within the past three days is you got to know how to preserve your oil lest there be not enough for you. You don't want to come out of COVID COVID not ready to praise him and rejoice because God brought you through it and is bringing you through it. Girl, let me tell you, there, there's a praise. Oh, 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 the memes that's out about praising God when this is over. I'm going to make my own and run around my own house and apartment and just see me running. Because that means I, I came through. You don't want to come through this and then not necessarily that I don't know if it's going to be like a, a light switch as they keep saying. I don't think it's going to be a light switch and everything's going to be normal. I don't think it's going to be that. But I do think it's going to be a season of praise and rejoicing and appreciation. I do think it's going to be that. He said in the last verse of that, he said, but he asked me and said, Verily I say unto you, I don't know you. And it means that you didn't run this race with patience. Any true athlete will tell you, you can't take off. Any true track, I ain't never done track, so I ain't, I'm just going to tell you what they said. <laughs> it's what you got to do. Don't you take off fast. You got to take off at a nice pace because you got a few tracks. You got a few laps. You got to run. Um, we're working in our food and clothes house, and you know that. And, and I mean, the numbers are, they are escalating just as they told us they would. Uh, Thursday was like almost triple, seriously, almost triple of what we've been doing. So it's happening, just like they said, from the day we started and COVID took place. The young lady, her name is Rosie, dear woman named Rosie, she's over the Sacramento Food Bank. She said to us, she said, listen, she told all the agencies, she said, I'm telling you right now, don't prepare, don't get in this thing like it's a sprint. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Her point was, you know, don't take off with all this volunteering, everybody, and all oh, you so excited. Because it's going to be a minute. We're going to be feeding people for a minute. This thing is going to get worse. And so pace yourself. And when she said that, I thought of the oil. 
So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that in this COVID thing, in this whole thing that we're all going through that we can't deny, we that are believers, preserve your oil. Don't get the so carnal. Preserve your oil. Um, you can only hold up so many people. Preserve your oil. You that are married in your families and in your marriages, you know, you can't change him. You can't change you. That's, that's blessing. I'm blessing. She, the dove might be on her to minister, but she, I'm just saying. You have to preserve your oil even for your companion, for your husband, for your wife. You can't change them. They can't change you. So stop wasting your oil and complaining about everything they do and start preserving your oil and just loving them for who they are. Preserve your oil. Stop getting frustrated with your kids over every little thing that they're, they're home. Guess what? Your kids may not talk about but your kids can be fearful too. They just know how to say it. Your kids are frustrated too. They can't go to school. They miss their friends. This online thing is crazy. They don't like it. They're going through stuff too. So why are you wasting your oil fussing at them instead of just love them through it? Just love them through it. Preserve your oil. There's so many things. Your job is frustrating. They don't have this thing set up right. It's so confusing. And girl, they don't know what they want. Well, because nobody's gone through this. So stop holding your bosses to so much responsibility. Now you're frustrated when you know you're doing customer service from home. You know you can hear your dog barking, right? So all that kind of stuff. True story. True story. True story. I had to call a customer service worker. Her dog was barking in the back. I was like, it's okay. I'm going to make you still working from home. The point is, everything is new. And you got to pick and choose your battles. Listen, I talked to the women one time. Control your controllables and all your uncontrollables. Let them go. You know why? You're going to take up my oil. Control your controllables. Things you can control. Everything about you, you can control. You can control talking back. You can control being irritated. You can control gaining weight. You can control being frustrated with you. You can control that. But your companion or your kids or... Your baby's dead, you can't control them. So control your controllables, leave your uncontrollables, let them go. Preserve your oil. So, he said the last verse, 13th verse, he says, So watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. So watch, church. Be watchful unto prayer. Be watchful of your spirit. And I promise you what helps me is the more I pray for people. She, Blessing, are you going to pray? Yeah? Y'all want to see me? Come here, Blessing. I know she, she, I know she's, come here. The more that you learn to pray for circumstances that frustrate you, God will increase your oil to handle it. She don't want to come. She said her hair is not right. <laughs> the more... That you learn to pray. Come on, Blessing. You want to come? She knows I'm on TV. She knows I'm <laughs> she, she, she sees me on the camera. The more that you pray for things that frustrate you and irritate you, I promise you as a witness, the more the Lord will pour the oil back in you. And he'll replenish you with the oil. And the oil will be on your head. And he will anoint you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. The more that you give it to Jesus, true story, we know that we're dealing with companies and, and, and my husband and I have our own business and we're spinning things and making it happen. So you're spinning in and you're trying to make things work. This SBA thing, like they said, we ain't got it. We ain't got it. They ain't moved. But we're making it work. We know God gave it to us. We believe God gave it to us. We're doing family meals, box lunches. We started something that we're pretty proud of and it was healthcare workers. We, we partnered with some people that said, hey, would you partner with us to prepare something for some healthcare workers in the hospital literally around the corner from our job? We said, yeah, we did do it. We prepared 70, Chef did this amazing, 70 box, box lunches for these healthcare workers. We delivered it, it was great. We were happy, giving truly is what we do. It's, it's, it's really our niche of what we love. So the response was great. People started buying box lunches and now we're doing it on a regular basis. We're giving people, um, we get 10, and then last night we delivered 10 more to the emergency area. We've got another hospital we're gonna deliver to. It's been great. Well, in the process of that, what's been beautiful is my husband and I have been standing on, we only know how to give to be blessed. We believe scripture that it's more blessed to give than to receive. We know this is a business. We know we need money to stay alive and God is sustaining us. I mean, you know, we're still alive. That's all I know. We're still alive. 
but we truly believe that the method of blessing is by giving. We believe it. It's how we've gotten everything we have is by giving. True story. So yesterday, the oil. So I'm praying over it, and you know, we're both trying to keep each other encouraged. It's going to be okay. We're quoting scriptures. We won't be weary, or, or we won't fret of the prosperity of the wicked, knowing that we trust in God. God's going to bless us. We're just encouraging each other. So yesterday, and if you're watching today, my dear sister, I want to tell you how much you have no idea how you bless us. A young lady comes in yesterday. She ordered her family meal. And as she's leaving, she's talking to him. She said, she said, can I talk to you for a minute? And she said, she said, you know, we watch your service. Okay, it's always a little awkward when I'm at work in the restaurant business and somebody's saying they watch my service because I'm trying not to speak in time. Should I lay hands? What am I going to do? I don't know. I'm at a restaurant. It's funny. Anywho, but when it happens, it's also great because, you, you know, the wine is for the best. You never know how many lives you've touched. You don't know where it's going. So she shares her testimony, how the ministry has been blessing her, how she had, she was part of the 24-hour prayer, which was like, wow. Um, how she and her pastor, and I send love to her and her pastor and her family. Um, thank you so much for your seed. And she sold a seed into us and just prayed. But as she was leaving, she began to bless the restaurant. And she began to say, she said, listen, we're intercessors, and we believe that that's a kindred connection. She said, I want you to know that God said there's a blessing over this restaurant. And I want you to know that God is going to bless this restaurant. It was just, she began to pray and just declare a word of the restaurant. Okay, so now I'm crying a little bit. And it was like, praise you, Father. Literally, literally, it was a little oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was Jesus. Give me just a little oil saying, you got this. Keep moving. That's how he'll do you. When you begin to release the oil to him, even as the woman did at the feet of Jesus, Jesus begins to release oil to you. Okay, so it felt good. It was like, wow, that was something, honey. I see this here. I was like, wow, God is amazing. True story. Literally about 45 minutes later, literally, chef is going outside because this other restaurant is about to open up. And we're just trying to see what our competitors are doing. He's walking outside. This woman and man, and their names, I don't know if I should tell you their name, but anywho, this couple, they're walking up to us. And they said, listen, the dude is walking up, counting out $100 bills. He said, I want to give this to you guys. I saw what you're doing with the healthcare workers. I want to see you guys have only been open three months. He said, I'm, I'm amazed at what you're doing. We got you. We got your back. If you need anything, let us know. True story. 30 to 45 minutes. After the woman of God had prayed and blessed the house, here comes these people, and they said, you're not going down. Whatever you need, let us know. We got you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, God's got oil that he'll continue to pour into you as you continue to put that which you need of him at his feet. You put it at his feet. There's a lot we're all going through. Everybody's going through something different. You want to preserve your oil. Before you let your lamp go out, put it at the feet of Jesus. And watch Jesus let that oil come back to you. He said, I don't know you because my children, you will preserve that oil. Because it is the most precious thing in your life. That was enough. My husband and I, we stood out there. He couldn't say nothing. Well, now nah, I'm messed up. I'm just bawling and crying. <laughs> I like what? I got to go in the bathroom, get myself together, because then I am speaking in tongues at the job, but I go in the bathroom. It's just, because, God, how could you prove yourself so quickly? How? You're so faithful. You're so true. You're so honest. And it was enough oil to say, you're going to be all right. Let me tell you about how God works. It didn't even matter what we made at that point. It didn't matter. It didn't matter how much we made for the day, what was the tally, what was the expenses. It didn't matter, because oil was in here. Yeah, shout out Oil is here. We're going to be all right. His oil, his presence is here. He's confirmed it. He's ordained it. It's, it's going to be okay. That's what happens in the presence of the oil. Saints, preserve your oil. The portion of God that is upon your life, the oil that is upon your life, the anointing that is on your life, it's because it's his oil. It's going to keep you through this. It's going to keep you through this. His oil is going to refresh you. His oil will take away depression. His oil will take away the loneliness. I promise you, his oil, it will lift the grief. His oil, it'll help the pain. His oil. So when you feel really, 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 really low, when you feel that light, go up, just tell him, Jesus, Lord, tell him, love you, tell him. I need so much more, Jesus, more of you. Tell him, tell him, I need more. We're talking about the oil. I need it, Jesus. 
let that enemy make you think this is it. It's over. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's stress, man. Everybody's under it. People are trying to figure their way. Everybody's processing it differently. Find a way to steal away and walk around your house and tell the Lord, Jesus, Lord. Uh, you just need more oil. He got you. I need more to the Lord. Christ. 
I praise God for you. Listen, I have concluded that Tim has already enlarged his territory. And for you that watch us faithfully, you that come into us faithfully, you are part of this TIP family. So thank you for being a part of the TIP family. If you need a TIP God connection, we have and we've always had for over three years what we call our e-members. Get connected to our e-members. Go to our website, www.tipministries.com, or excuse me, .org. Get online, sign up for the e-membership, and what you'll be assigned is a TIP ambassador. That ambassador will personally email you, reach out to you. It's a one-on-one -on -one personal communication that they'll talk to you, minister to you, keep you strengthened. If you're somebody that's home alone and don't have a lot of contacts, you want to be a part of the e-membership. It's keeping you with a God connection. Somebody that's going to pray with you, keep you connected, keep you encouraged so you don't come through this alone. I decided that the, the, the family, the, the doors of this is good across are way beyond Sacramento. I can't even see ministry anymore in those four corners alone at 6489. We're part of a bigger body. God is enlarging our territory. So you are part of our family. If you're connected nowhere, Get connected with us. We got you. There's things we're doing to improve it. We're things we're doing so that we can become more touchable and more reachable to you. That's very important to me. Stay connected in this season and in this time. To all of our faithful givers, thank you. Thank you to the faithful tithers of this is good cause. Like priests, like people, just as Elder Q and I believe in the spirit of giving, I am grateful for the spirit of giving that is in our house. The saints that are faithful to their tithing, faithful to their giving. If you are not following us under the DLCEnterprise.org website, it's phenomenal to see what's happening at our church. Our church has literally turned into a food pantry. There are boxes and boxes of food everywhere. It is the best feeling ever. So your giving is keeping that building alive to serve the community, to serve hundreds. I think I told you on last month, just between February, excuse me, April 2nd and April 18th, we fed over 3,000 families. Do you hear me? So hats off, praise God for all the sons and daughters, men and women of God who are coming and volunteering to serve these people. Listen, I get it. Everybody can't do it. Some say you need to stay in to be safe and take care of yourself. I judge nobody. But please help me applaud your brothers and sisters who are there every Thursday, every Saturday, every every third Friday. Those that are coming on Mondays and Tuesdays to help bag and put things together. Please applaud your brothers and sisters and appreciate them for what they're doing that we can't for sure bear the infirmities of the week. So your tithing and your giving is keeping that building alive. We are 100% a lighthouse in our city and a lighthouse in our community that cannot be hid. They need us. They want us. They are appreciative of what we're doing. Your tithing is doing that. You're sowing. You're giving. So remain faithful to your tithing, to your giving. If you don't know what that is, it's simply the Lord asking us to give 10% of the first fruit of our labor, and it has been proven that he rebukes the devourer for our sake. He said, when you give unto me, he said, I open up the windows of heaven, and I pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. We are blessed. Every tither is blessed. Every giver. Listen, uh, one of our daughters came to the restaurant to get her family meal yesterday to tell us how she just got a brand new house, a brand new house in the midst of COVID. You better go. Faithful tither givers. God is still blessing. Another one posted a picture. She has got her brand new car. Listen, God is still blessing. He's still doing what he's doing in the midst of COVID. Don't forget, download our TVN app. Listen, if you didn't get that last post about uh, principles, are, what did I say? You got to practice principles in order for them to be proven. You got to practice them. You got to practice principles in order for them to be proven. I want to do a couple of tweets on this and a couple of posts on this. Because the more that we practice God's principles, the more you'll see God is right. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. He's right. So download our TV and app so you can make sure you stay on top of that. Listen, church is moving on. Ministry is moving on the way that we're doing it now. I'm not even thinking about the day when the door, I lie. I, lie. I am thinking about when the days are open. But if they never open, I've got to work what we got right now. And the main thing is for us to stay connected with one another. And he's doing it by his spirit. Where two or three are gathered in his name, ask, ask, touching and agreeing. 
So we got you. If you're following us in Italy, we got you. We got you in Europe. We got you in Africa. We got you in China. We got you in New York, Chicago, Detroit, Georgia. We got you. As Ohio, we got you. As touching and agreeing. We're meeting in the spirit. May you go with the love of Jesus Christ. And may the love of Jesus Christ go with you until Wednesday and until different posts throughout the week. May you go with God. May God go with you. Wow.